Hi, my name is Sharon Apotion Wright, and I have been asked to teach a class on how do I get from there to here, which is how to take your photographs and turn them into quilts. Uh, we're coming from outside right at this moment because this is where one of my quilt. This is the setting of one of my quilts, and so I thought you'd like to see where where I got the idea for the I looked out the window quilt. Um, we're in COVID fashion. This is the first day I have worn makeup in months. And um, also, I generally have my mask on, um, but we will go without the mask so that you can read my lips if you need to. I hope this will be a beneficial class and that you will have fun making your own quilts and that you will see things through different eyes as you take pictures of them and then decide that you can turn them into quilts. So we're going to go down into my sewing room where where I do all of my all of my creating and we will head downstairs and and begin the class. Well here we are through the magic of a sweet photographer who can turn her camera on and off. Um, we're now in my sewing room. Welcome to welcome to my little sewing cave and this is this is where I do all of my all of my creating. And um, thank you for, for doing, coming here with me because it made me clean it up. You almost never can see the floor, nor the cutting table, nor the ironing, full ironing board, nor this shelf. So it is, this is the clean version of my sewing room. Um, I'm going to start today by um, showing you how I went, how I got the inspiration and excitement to do a lion quilt. My son, Justin, had gone to Africa um, as part of a, a study program he was on. Oh, first of all, I need to take this off. I was reminded that I always, always have this on and I don't even think about it, but I'll take my audio book off so I can concentrate on you. Um, my son Justin had gone to Africa and he was very excited um, when he was driving along and saw a lion just right outside, his, right outside the window of his car. It was in the bushes. And so I've always had this thought that it would be fun to do a lion quilt. Then back in, I think it was about 2016, but I'm not sure, um, a company called Cherry Wood Fabrics um, issued a challenge. It was called the Cherry Wood Challenge. And they said that their challenge was to do a lion quilt. And you had to use all of their fabrics. And I was very, for the front of the quilt, not for the back. So I was excited about that. In fact, I was so excited um, because that son, Justin, had just had a son named Aram, and so I thought a father and, and son lion quilt, a father lion and a cub would be really fun. So I got online, started looking for pictures of a lion and a cub, and this is the one that I found. But I really liked, I thought that would be such a great quilt. Okay, so I wanted to turn this picture into a quilt, and it had to be a specific size. It needed to be, I don't remember the size, probably two feet by two feet. And I, um, so obviously I needed to blow this up. So rather than blowing it up as a photograph, I laid a piece of plastic over the photograph and I traced it. Just with a, with a permanent marker, a fine tip permanent marker, I traced, I just did a, a line drawing of this photograph and it came out looking looking like that so that's what I that was the beginning of my pattern that's what I had to work with obviously it needed to be blown up and since I'm re I didn't want to get in the car and go down to the copy store and blow it up I just used the feature on my printer that will allow me to blow this up so I laid this on my printer and then I multiplied it by 200 and so I blew it up to this size. That's 200 times the original little one. So then it got to be this big. It still needed to be bigger to fit, to be big enough to fit on this quilt. So I folded my print, I folded it into quarters and blew up each quarter by 200. And so then I was able to get a full size sheet of this, a full size sheet of this, a full size sheet of this, and a full size sheet of this. Then I took those, laid them on my sewing table, and 
taped them back together and ended up with the size that I needed and then I traced over it on plastic and this is the finished size that would be just right for the pattern that I needed. So that was, that was the, final, the final one that I worked with on my, on my quilt. And you can see that this one is just the head, but I, I obviously, parts of it were just the body when I, when I blew it up. But that's the size that I wanted the head to be. Then I had to go to my fabric, and it had to be all cherry wood. And so I picked out colors that looked like lion colors. They had given, as part of the challenge, you have to send away and, and buy some of their fabric. So they had specific colors that you had to include, but I had bought some other cherry wood fabrics, and so I was able to supplement with my cherry wood fabrics also. So I did it on black and laid it all on, and um, I fused the back of my fabrics with um, Wonder Under. 805 Wonder Under, Iron On, Pellon. And so I just ironed it on the back of each of the pieces that I had. Then I, um, and oh, and before I ironed the pieces on, I cut, the, I traced the pictures onto the paper side so that it would be, so that I wouldn't have to waste too much of the fabric. So I traced it, cut it out roughly, and then ironed it onto the fabric. And then I could just peel off the paper and, and, and I cut it out and peeled off the paper and then was able to have the pieces all ready to start assembling on my black background fabric. And obviously I, I um, started with the mane um, and, um, and worked, worked through to the face and the cub. The cub was just um, three different colors, a light tan, a darker um, tan, and then that part that's shadowing underneath. So I just laid them all on. Obviously the eyes weren't on, the, there was no detail. It was just the flat fabric. And um, it looked a little creepy, those hollow eyes with just yellow on there with no shading or anything else. I did all that later. Um, but I was able to fuse it all on so that it looked like the picture that I wanted. Then I decided to start quilting it to see if the mane would come out right because I just, I was just winging it. So I, I um, put it back on the fabric. I chose some fabric that Justin had brought back from Africa. So that was what I put on the back. He carried this in his backpack across Africa. Very sweet that his son would go to a market and buy African fabric for me. It's very, very stiff and not very nice to work with. But um, he brought that back and I wanted that on the back of his quilt also. And so I, I put the back on, I did the batting, I obviously hadn't bound it yet, but I started the quilting process before I really did anything else because I wanted to know how it would turn out. So I started around the, around the lower part of the mane, I used variegated threads and just was going back and forth and back and forth. I wanted it to look like fur. And, but some parts I wanted to be glowy, so I'd use some metallic in there and I switched colors for the dark part under the mane. I just started Zig not zigzagging, but up and down, up and down, up and down, just scribble quilting on the quilt. And I decided I liked it. And so I continued. I just kept playing with the thread and getting it the way I wanted it. And then I, and, and obviously this is not fine applique. It's just fused on. It's not, this is not your best quilting you'll ever do. It's just for fun. It's not, it's for effect, not for judging in a quilt show really. So I just saw that I needed um, shading, I needed shading around the eyes, I needed darker and lighter, I, I just wanted to add some shading around the chest of the cup. So I just chose colored pencils. I like um, Koh-i-Noor colored pencils because they are, they are um, like the lead all the way through, they don't have any wood, it's the solid pigment all the way through. So I like working with these. And they come in a nice range of colors. You can get them at, at Michael's or Robert's or wherever, wherever you like to um, buy your art supplies. But I just colored it in um, where, I, where I wanted to color. I used the photograph um, as, as my pattern. I'd look at that and go, I need to have this part here. I need to have this part of the cup. And so I just looked at the photograph and tried to make my fabric look like the photograph. So I just colored it with colored pencils. 
Then in order, and I knew that this one I would never wash. It's not a quilt that's going to be used and washed. It's a wall hanging. And so I didn't worry about setting the color other than by ironing it. But I'm not sure that that would be absolutely color safe. If you are going to color a quilt with, with pencils and you need it to be color fast, then you need to buy a fixative. And I use Jacquard Textile Colorless Color Extender. And it looks like Elmer's glue when you use it. You just paint it on. It looks white. When you paint it on, you just paint it over the entire thing. Then you heat set it, and that makes it color fast. I have tried it on fine quilts, and it works great. And so you just paint, paint the the color fixative over over wherever you painted. You iron it on. It doesn't look shiny or anything. It comes out looking great, and that's how you fix the color if you're going to wash the quilt. So after I had shaded it. Then I finished the quilting. There were places where I wanted to add detail that needed to be more than a color pencil could do. And so I just used a micron pigment pen, especially, especially for, the, for around the eyes, around the mouth, where I just wanted more than the color pencil would do. I just used a micron pigment pen and just kind of did little dots or I, I just shaded it in with a pen. And those are color fast. They, they work really well. I use those for my writing on a quilt also. And so that's how, I, that's how I got the body of the quilt. Then I was able to finish quilting it where I wanted more accents around the top of the mane and all of that. After I had quilted the whole thing, um, I hadn't bound it yet, but I wanted to add some grass along the bottom. So I just added some green and then just did my scribble quilting. And then to add whiskers, I just did dots with my Micron Pigment Pen. And then I got fishing line. And I sewed fishing line into it, tied it into a knot, pulled it tight, and then just cut it off at odd angles. It's a real heavy-duty fishing line, and so it made it really, those whiskers stand out and are very stiff. Uh, years ago, I had bought some braid that I thought looked kind of African. Um, I had Justin's African fabrics um, that he had brought back. Some of them I thought were kind of ugly. Um, and I'm not sure still what I'll do with them, but I will do something for him with those fabrics. But some of them were kind of cool. So they, be, they may become a quilt at some point. But with these in mind, I had seen some braid that I thought would be a cool top for, to go a, an accent on a quilt. So I didn't, so I just chose the one that was kind of a little more, less conspicuous, I guess. And so I, I sewed that along the top of the quilt, then I bound it, made sure it was the correct size. Um, I was very disappointed and angry at Cherrywood Fabrics because after I got my quilt all done, then they sent a, a text or an email out to everyone who had bought fabric and said, we've changed our theme, now it's the Lion King with the with the Broadway theme because they had made an agreement with Broadway that they were going to show the quilts at Broadway. And so they wanted it to be more glitzy. They wanted it to have a Broadway theme. I wrote and expressed my displeasure that they would change their theme after they had already published it, but they obviously didn't listen to me. Um, anyway, this is the quilt that I finished with. I loved it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, just as a little side note, the background on the quilt, I quilted from, I quilted from behind. So I followed this design um, so that I could quilt around this stuff. I quilt, I followed this whole design as my pattern for the background quilting on the black. And then I used colored pencils and just colored it in very faintly so that you just have a hint of motion in the background. So if you look at it closely, you can see where I, I quilted around this from the back onto the front with black thread. And, that, and then I colored it and I did, I did paint the color fixative on that so that it would stay. For my label, you will see that I included a photograph of my son Justin and his new baby arm because the quilt is for arm. I included a photo, the photo from which I took the quilt. I gave information about how I did it. I, I included all of the techniques that I used on that quilt. And the label says, I made this quilt to commemorate the birth of my first son's first son arm. And then techniques used were fused raw edge applique, 
colored pencil shading, thread painting with silk metallic variegated, embellishments, fishing line whiskers. Back gown is quilted from the back of the quilt following the pattern on the African backing fabric. The design on the front was then colored for accent. So that was, that was the label that I put on there. I need to talk for a second about using photographs. If you choose to use a photograph that you find online, some of them will say free. Um, I really, really liked this photograph. It did not say free. It said Getty Images. And so I had to purchase the right to use this, and it cost me $150 to be able to use that photograph on the quilt. I really, really liked it. To me, it was worth it to, to be able to use that particular one. I tried to find others that I liked as well, and once I saw this one, maybe it was just psychological, but I felt like I, it was worth the $150 to me to do it. So I have kept the, um, the information showing that I have the right to use this, this photograph however I want. I paid my $150 for that privilege. And, um, but be careful if you don't want to get stuck doing that. I don't suppose that I would have been too worried about it had I known that it was just going to hang in a baby's bedroom. But I felt that since I was contemplating entering it in a show, that I didn't want it disqualified for any reason. And so I felt that it was worth it to pay for the use of the photograph. Um, that is only fair. If someone goes to the work of traveling to Africa to get these great pictures, then you should pay them for that, the privilege of using it. Um, they almost always have been sold to Getty Images, but there are other, other companies that um, publish photographs too. So just pay attention to that when you're looking for a photograph for something. Um, we're now going to move on to my next quilt that I did, and it was as a result of the I looked out the window challenge that Utah Valley Quilt Guild offered a few years ago, so we'll move on to that one now. For this next little session, I have a couple of granddaughters here who wanted to be in front of the camera for a moment, so this is Tally and this is Ellie, and they often give me creative instruction on some changes I should make on quilts. Thank you, girls. You can go play now. Do you want to go jump on the trampoline for a while? I just want to get a prize. Okay, go up and choose a couple of prizes, each of you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we also have added a, two students to our class so they can ask questions if I forget. Thank you. The masked Barbara Walsh and her, and her dog, Daisy, will be joining us for this section of the class. In this one, I'm going to tell you how I did the I looked out the window quilt because it has a little bit more complex, um, more complex techniques. And so I will. You've already learned the basics. Now we're going to go to a quilt that's a, maybe a little harder, but not necessarily. Um, for this one, I took pictures out of my bathroom window. The challenge was I looked out the window, and so I thought, well, that's, that's easy. My husband, every morning, gets out of the bathtub, leans his elbows in the windowsill, looks out the window at whatever creatures might be walking by, and he says, I love this place. And so, so when, when the challenge was to do anything you might see if you looked out the window, I thought, well, I don't just see what's outside the window. I see my husband looking out the window. So that is the quilt that I did. So I took photographs of things that were going on outside my window. And you saw me outside from, you saw where, where I, you saw the steps and the, the flowers and the grapevine and the swing set. So all of those elements I wanted in my quilt. So what I did was I just drew it on a big sheet of paper. I don't have it anymore. That was several years ago and I decided I didn't need to save it. But it was on a large sheet of paper. I just basically drew in, this is where I want the step, the, the grass line. This is where I want the plants. This is where the swing set goes. This is where the grape harbor goes. This is where the trampoline is. So I kind of just sketched those in. And I, then I went to my fabric drawer and chose fabrics that would work for it. So I chose obviously this for the grass. That was up close, so it could be a large scale fabric like that. Um, we have a big section that's on a slant 
that could be all kinds of flowers. And I took I took poetic license. I I did more than just daisies. I did orange flowers and and all different colors of flowers on the quilt. So for that slope section, I just found fabrics that had the right scale of flowers, and I just fussy cut the flowers out. So to begin the whole project, after I had drawn the basic outline on a large sheet of paper, then I got an ugly fabric. And this can be any of your ugly old Joanne fabrics that you bought thinking you would use someday and didn't. And so just choose an ugly fabric to be your base. It doesn't have to fit in at all. It can be any color. It's not going to show. So something like this would have worked really well because it could have, some of it could have shown and that would have been all right back in, in the forest part. But um, so, so just I just laid out a piece of fabric and then I drew, as I had drawn on the pattern, I just drew with a marker, this is where the flower section is going to be, this is the lawn section, this is where I want the steps, this is where the grape barber is, the swing set and the trampoline. And so I just drew those in. Now it doesn't matter if you make a mistake when you're drawing that part in because it's all going to be cover covered with fabric. Then I went and just started choosing out set pieces of fabric that I thought would look good. More flowers, more flowers. Um, a few years ago I found some great fabrics that I thought could be wonderful skies if I was doing a landscape. This would be a great beach, beach and sky fabric. So keep your eye open for fabrics that can be multi-use. This, wouldn't this be a great sunset and a, with a saguaro in the background? So, so depending on what kind of photography, what kind of pictures, where you travel, you might want to look. My friend Barbara got me one similar to this for the back of a witch, the sky, the sky behind a witch. So just choose out fabrics that you think will lend themselves to, to um, the background that you will need them for. For me, I needed lots of greens. You can see I have a forest in my, in, on my quilt. I have a swing set, so I needed some metallic for the chains on the swing. I have lots of animals. When you look at the pictures that will be on this quilt, um, there are 50 animals on this quilt. Well, I didn't want to go searching for animal fabric, so I decided to draw my own, but I am not an artist. Um, but years ago, I found that the Usborn books are really great for animals, for my style of animals. I really like their artistic style. And so I just found they have rainforest, they have ocean, they have the woods. So I found some deer that I thought were cute. There's one going up in the tree and I did that one on, I did that one on this quilt. I did this one. So again, I, I had a hedgehog on the quilt. There are, there's a fox on this quilt. There are rabbits, skunks. Um, all kinds of creatures that I have really truly seen in my backyard. And so I just had to find a picture that basically was a style that I liked. I traced them as I showed you how to do over the line. I just traced these pictures, then I expanded them on my printer to the size that I wanted them to be so they'd be in proportion on the quilt. I didn't want a, a great big rabbit that was the same size as the deer, and so I had to kind of keep printing them so that they would come out the right size. But I just got all the pictures that I wanted from this book, I expanded them, and, and then I was able to um, trace them onto just plain beige fabric. So I traced all of the animals onto beige fabric, then I put fusing on the back, the same kind of fusing that I used before, the, Pellon uh, 805, put this on the, fuse this onto the back so that it would stabilize it. Then I was able to color, um, color and shade, make the animals black and white if I needed, make them, make the snake gray and black, whatever I wanted, I was able to do with my colored pencils. Again, I used, I used the Co Koinor colored pencils to to color the um, animals, and then I did accents again with the Micron Pigma pen 
so I outlined them and, and got the did the accents, the eyes, the stripes, all that kind of thing with the pigment pen. And then I did before I ironed them on. This time I painted over, painted. I set the set the color with the um, jacquard textile fixative. Just painted over the whole thing. Then I cut the animals out and fused them on. Then of course I had to add a whole lot. I had to. Add, uh, stone for the steps. I had to add lots and lots of brown and green and all of that for all the background. I just fussy cut. I just cut bubbles of fabric and, and threw them on there. Of course, they don't look exactly like the trees, but you get the illusion of a forest by doing that. Barbara, does that all make sense so far? It does. Um, why do you use that particular colored pencil? I like these because they are all color all the time. They are, um, they are, there's no wood. Most pencils have a wood, have some color with wood. These are solid pigment. And so you can color them and sharpen them with a regular pencil sharpener, but you get more color out of your pencil. Okay. And so that's why I like these. I think regular color pencils will work just fine. It's the fixative that makes a difference. I just happen to like to get my money's worth, and I think colors are pretty. And where did you get those, and where did you get the fixative? The color pencils I just got, it, I don't remember if it was Michael's or Robert's, but it was just a local craft, so I think it was Michael's. The fixative, sometimes they will have a fixative at a store. I sent away for this because I looked it up online and this was the one that met my needs, and so I sent away for it. I think it was about $8 for, for that. It goes a long, long way. Any other questions at this point? No. Okay, so after I started laying these all on, first of all, I would just fuse the, the, the um, webbing, the wonder under, on a large section of fabric. That wastes some of the wonder under, but it was easier than cutting out little sections of it. And so I would just fuse a section, then I'd cut out all the flowers I wanted out of it, and just start, I just started placing them so that they looked right. Of course, I had to do the rocks around the rock border, I had to do the steps, I had to do the blue for the trampoline, and yes, we have actually looked out and seen deer on the trampoline. Um, and so, so I just started putting it all together. And I would, um, I found that batiks were really helpful for some of the background, for some of the part, as it gets farther away, the batiks blend in well. And so I just made the whole thing, ironed it all on. Now, if you have worked with iron on things, you'll find that sometimes they adhere really well, and sometimes the edges peel up, and I didn't want that to happen. And also, I wanted it to have the effect of glistening. So I bought tool. that's the tiny size net, I bought tool in a shimmery pattern. So it wasn't just like plain white, it was a gray that had a metallic feel to it. Because I wanted you to look like, I am looking through a window, it's a little bit, it's not quite as um, clear as if I were just looking at it directly. If you are not familiar with tulle, it's just very, very fine knitting. It comes in lots of colors. You can buy it in the roll. But this I bought, of course, by the yard to go on this project. Um, and is but you would be way as bridal tool. Yes, it's bridal tool. And you would be surprised at the different effects you get as you lay it on fabric. So I had to kind of take my quilt down to Joanne's to audition whether I wanted I wanted that shimmery effect. But there's what you can really see through it really well. That's with black. That one's with brown, it changes it a little bit, but if you look at it from an angle, you get a little bit of a shimmer of whatever color it is you choose. And so that's why I chose the one that I did. A lot of our quilters will use tool on top of all these fibers that they've got spread all over the place, and then they quilt over that so mm -hmm. that everything stays put. And that was the whole purpose of yeah. putting the tool on here, was to make, it, to make everything lay down so I wouldn't get little edges that would turn up. Then, I just started quilting the whole thing. Um, I quilted, I think, all, with the exception of around the animals and, and around the, sorry to show you my back, um, with the exception of around the animals, I just outlined around the animals. Um, I tried to outline around the flowers, but everything else was, I tried to do up and down, up and down quilting for the grass. I tried to do tree trunks. On the chains, I tried to do a little 
um, chains, but most of it is kind of basic stippling at this point because the quilting really doesn't show all that much. Um, then, to finish up my quilt, I needed to put my husband in here. And there's a little story about this. You can see this is the tile pattern around our bathroom. Um, I quilted the design into the, pan, into the thing. It was just on tan. So it was this color fabric. And then I used my colored pencils again to add the pattern. So I just colored this with my colored pencils rather than piecing all these little bits. I just quilted the lines in and then colored them so that, so that I didn't have to spend all that time piecing the outside. Part of the challenge was, of, the, of this assignment, was that it has to have a traditional quilt block in it. And so I counted these as my traditional quilt blocks for it to, to qualify it for that challenge. Um, then of course I had to add my husband. Um, he came down into my sewing room, saw himself hanging there, and we had a fight that would have qualified us for a divorce because I didn't think he should have a towel over his behind. <laughs> and he said, well, I'm not going to have all those quilting women seeing the way I look from behind without a towel on. And so um, I said, it's my quilt. This is my um, chance to use my artistic creation. It's my quilt. I can put you on there however I want. And he really threw a fit over it. So I said, okay, I'll put a towel on you. And so I got the towel on, I got his little bum all padded, got it all done, and then I said, I'm not going to, but I'm not going to sew the towel down. So that, and I noticed as this quilt was hanging, many, many people would come by and try to lift up the towel to see what was behind the towel. Um, so he was right about what quilting ladies are like, I'm afraid. But as I was doing the final cleaning up of the quilt, after I bound it and everything, I accidentally nicked the binding with my rotary cutter, so I had to sew the quilt down so that people wouldn't know that I had a hole in my binding. So he won. He won that battle. He got the towel sewn down, and, and, and he is modest in this, in this quilt. Um, but it is very fun to watch people when this quilt is hanging as they come by and try to lift up the towel to see what's underneath. Any questions, Barbara? Uh, I was not aware that you had simply quilted those uh, tiles and then colored them. I thought that you had pieced that. That was or my I, my little way of cheating, and I think it it was a lot faster than having to piece that whole thing. It worked. It worked. It's okay. This kind of quilt, when you're doing a a scene, you're not doing this quilt to lay it on a bed. You're not doing it to be extremely durable. You want it to last. For however many generations will want to look at this quilt. Um, I have grandkids who just love to just sit and study it and count the animals and see if they can find all 50 animals and, and all of that. And so they get a lot of wear, but they're not a quilt that's going to be um, on a bed and have to be washed a lot. And so they are not, you're not doing your finest quilting. This quilt took me less than a week to do. I'm one of those who, when I get a challenge, I go, <gasps> do it. I'm going to help support my friend who, who did this challenge. I will do it, but I don't want to waste a lot of my quilting time on it. And so it was very, very fun to just cut out all those pieces, fuse them on, get it laid on, but I wanted it to be durable enough that the kids could kneel on it and count the animals and all of that. And so do not think that you're doing your very finest work. You're not turning all those edges under. You're not doing fine applique. This is what I call lick and stick applique. But it's, it, the easy part about it is, is if you don't like a particular color, if you don't like the effect, you just don't iron it on. Choose something else and put on what you like. But I find that I have, I have had a need to do pictures on quilts and it, it expands me creatively so that, so that I am a more, so I see nature, I see people, I see things differently if I think that would make a fun quilt. And that makes me see, enjoy life and appreciate what I'm seeing as I'm going through it. If I think I might want to immortalize that in a quilt. I hope that this is helpful. I hope that Barbara asked a couple of questions. Is there anything else you need to ask about, about putting one of these together or anything? Like I said, it's lick and stick. No, but uh, it also reminds me of, oh, what was her name? We both took the class at Quilt Festival. 
Uh, the one, some people did cars. Oh, I yeah. Um, um, Linda Heine. Yeah, uh, Laura. Laura Heine. Yes. yes. And it reminds it's me a collage quilt. Way. That is what oh, it yeah, is. Kind of uh -huh. thing. It is. It is a collage quilt. When you're, when you're doing a picture, you're doing your own collage from, from something, a picture that you've already chosen. That's and neat. that's what it is. And, it's, and so it's not, um, not terribly fine quilting, but it's fun quilting. Hope you will have as much fun doing these as I have. You won't do all your quilts this way, but if I have helped to expand your creative horizons, then I will have succeeded. Stay safe. Um, wear your masks. Please, please, please wear your masks, and we hope to see you next year at Quilt Fest. Isn't she a nice dog? Yeah. Aww, she